good day and welcome to the latest edition of the Battlestar Galactica franchise uh, documentary. I'm delighted this evening to be joined by the one and only Candice McClure, who played the role of Officer Anastasia Duala in Battlestar Galactica, appearing in over 55 episodes in four seasons of the hit uh, TV sci-fi series. Candice, I suppose... Looking back at it uh, now, it seems almost like it's nearly a decade ago, 10 years ago now, Battlestar Galactica. Uh, does it almost feel like that? Uh, does it feel longer, I suppose, looking back at it when it when it came out uh, about 2004 to 2009, uh, five years? Yeah, a decade now. Does it feel like almost yesterday, though, you were back on set shooting? I think it's been longer than a decade since the beginning of it. I mean, my goodness, I, I was a baby. I was 23 when I started that show. It's a lot of life lived, but um, the memories are still so present, I guess, because I get to see everybody all the time. And the show keeps getting new fans. Uh, almost every day on my social media, somebody makes a Battlestar Galactica reference, something that parallels the, the um, political situation or you know some commentary from the show. Um, still, people still think I should have been a Cylon. I agree. <laughs> it does feel like yesterday. I can't believe that much time has passed, truly. And uh, Candice, in terms of Battlestar Galactica, we know there was a TV series uh, before us uh, back in the 80s, uh, which fe featured uh, Dirk Benedict. And But this almost felt like a new sort of uh, different sort of TV series. It had sort of elements from the past, but it had so many different tangibles uh, this time around. Uh, it's very hard to compare the both. Uh, they're probably in some bit of resemblance, but in terms of the Battlestar Galactica that you were uh, a part of, it's very much uh, a different type of sort of documentary, sci-fi franchise documentary compared to the original. I think the word reimagined, which is yeah. um, how it's described, is a really fitting example of it. There were some, there, obviously there's a relationship between the two shows, we watched very little of it in the beginning of the season because in terms of story and character and the kind of world that we wanted to create, it was very clear from the beginning that this was going to be something modern and topical and relevant and really about human nature and human relationship in a way that the original 80s version was cutting edge for its time. You know, it was doing things uh, that weren't being done on television in terms of race and um, special effects and budgets and all these things. But uh, our show was definitely a more uh, modern and present, um, realistic version of that. And I suppose, uh, Candice, uh, when I was talking to Grace, uh, she made the revelation that when in terms of casting and auditions that she actually tried out for the, the role of Starbuck. Uh, she was, and she actually didn't uh, get that role. Uh, Katie Sackhoff uh, got it. And she was I mentioned, uh, uh, obviously, uh, the, the character Officer Duala was pitched for her as well. But at the end, she wound up with sort of boom. How was it for in terms of you? Uh, did you go in and try and audition for Starbuck as well? Is there more revelations there? Or did you try out for different roles? Or was it always Officer Duala was the role you tried out for? Or was it your agent that recommended uh, the role to you? Or how did it come about? You're telling me something I didn't know all this time. I'm going to bug Grace about that. I had no idea that she... <laughs> yeah, um... she told me she tried out for <laughs> Starbuck. Yeah, she was in the same room, but uh, she didn't get it. I can see that, but Katie Sackhoff is so incomparable in that role. Um, she is now the measure of, of Starbuck. Yeah. You know, it was a very different process for me. Um, I've often told the story of how it was just kind of a fluke. I was on my way to Los Angeles and auditioned for a, t a TV movie, which what it originally was, was a two hour movie, uh, came up. Uh, there was no backstory to my character. There wasn't a a terrible amount of information about her. Uh, I didn't really even understand my lines when I said them. Uh, they were said straight into the camera, which is very unusual in an audition. Usually you're speaking to a person. Uh, it was the only role I went out for. And to be honest, I didn't expect it to really live beyond that two hour mini series. Um, yeah. I guess, yeah, maybe it was a difference in kind of 
Canadian versus American casting, which is sort of a thing uh, that often we have to deal with uh, here in Canada. But it was really pretty basic. I remember Michael Reimer being in the room. Um, I delivered the lines and I, in fact, got in my car and drove to Los Angeles that day. Uh, and a couple of weeks later, I had to turn around and drive back to Vancouver because I, I got the job. <laughs> And uh, in terms of that, you, you said you were going for a TV sort of program. Did you know it was Battlestar Galactica? Had you any sort of a, an idea? Was it just your agent said, we have an audition for you in Canada. We think it could be a suitable part for you. And that was a bit pretty much it. Or did you have any sort of research to go on? I had no research. I had no relationship oh. with the show previous to that. I mean, I grew up in South Africa. You know, we had limited cable. We didn't even have cable. We had something called MNET, which still exists. Uh, I grew up on Star Trek The Next Generation, but that's okay. uh, as far as my sci-fi extended. My agent pitched it to me like, hey, there's this TV movie. It's kind of cool. It's a sci-fi thing. There's great people involved. It'll be some change for you in your pocket when you go down to pilot season, you know, to go and book that big job. Uh, turns out it was the big job. And uh, Candice, uh, you mentioned it was the big job. So you it sort, of, sort of started off for, as you mentioned, a pilot. And when did you sort of realize in that, oh, 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 here, look, there's going to be a good few sort of seasons in this? Or at the time in season one was going, did you always sort of sense, were you working on a role that you had to hit so many numbers in season one to get a renewal for season two and so on and so on? Or did you know for a while that there'd be multiple seasons in the project? You know, being so young and new in the process at that point, it was really kind of an eyes and ears open situation. It was definitely palpably different, um, even in the read through. Once we all started getting together as a cast and being on set, you could tell that there was something with a great deal more depth uh, that I was involved in. Did I know that about my own character? Not exactly. Uh, I think just the experience of working with Eddie, seeing what diversity there was in the casting already. Mm -hmm. And as the story unfolded, it became clear that there was a possibility that there was uh, you know, room for, for Duella and the storyline that, that she could bring. I do remember Eddie saying very clearly though, episode um, 33, we did the read through and he got up and he said, especially to us young actors, uh, mm -hmm get ready. This is going to be a long haul. You're going to be doing this for a long time um, and pace yourself. And, you know, we thought it was, oh, that'd be great. Oh, we'd love to be on a show for a year, you know, but um, it wasn't until the second season that I really knew that I had a home there, um, that this was going to be a career defining um, part of my life and in fact, um, changed my life personally and professionally. Yeah, and your character, uh, Duala, I suppose in the first sort of season, we see her in sort of a, a sort of a background sort of role, but as the seasons grow, her character becomes more and more prominent, especially uh, season uh, three and season four, especially. I suppose for the, the first season as such, you were more on the, t in terms of, uh, the right hand side working the deck with sort of data uh, 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 and uh, working uh, working with outside uh, Adama and uh, Officer Tag and sort of headquarters sort of uh, situation sort of like that and uh, it was almost felt like a, a sort of a, a ship sort of commander sort of role for yourself. Um, I remember how excited I was the first time I got to leave the CIC. The first time yeah. <laughs> I got to uh, walk the deck. <laughs> I think I had a walk and talk with um, with Colonel Ty. Uh, and I thought, ooh, you know, this was promising things. But I think the real turning point for me was the scene that I had with Commander Adama. Um, that was the first clue that the writers were watching uh, they were taking note of what we were doing on set and the relationships that were building between the characters naturally. Uh, and they were building off those moments um, when they saw things happen on camera and it aligned with the story. I know that Eddie was a great advocate for me um, in my role on that show. 
uh, he really uh, spoke up for me in, you know, in the rooms that I wasn't, I wasn't in. Um, and there was a moment, I think, again, that, that first scene with, uh, with Adama, where I, I challenge him and, and get him to keep to his promises about finding Earth, about, about continuing to lead us. And um, from there on, it just kind of snowballed. And I was even surprised at the amount of, of story that Duella carried. But as a young actor, oh my gosh, what a gift to be able to learn and practice and grow in those situations. And I really was learning on my feet. <laughs> You mentioned as a young uh, actress, and obviously you were uh, sort of one of the young actors. And there was almost a scene, scene that we'll put the two young actors together and sort of create a sort of little sort of mini sort of romance sort of story. And uh, how did you hear about that? And in terms of that, when it came about, it was almost like a recreation of a new sort of human sort of race, uh, having the young sort of intermingle with each other. And uh, that romance between yourself and uh, Billy uh, Paul Campbell. The eternal question: uh, the the Billy and D fans and the uh, D and Lee fans. Uh, I know I the the fans really uh, were upset with the way Duella treated uh, Billy. <laughs> it was out of my hands. I loved that part of the storyline in the first season. I remember the scene, uh, Paul Campbell in the CIC and, and Mary and Eddie are, are speaking and um, President Roslin and, and Adama. And they say, you know, they should have babies. And they look at the two of us and there's the sense of hopefulness. Um, Billy's character, Paul Campbell's character was so full of genuine uh, hope and true belief in the show. And uh, Duala was that same representation at the heart uh, of the ship on, on the military side. So it was natural that the two of them should kind of come together representing those two sort of bodies of the, le uh, of the remains of humanity and that they would come together. Um, didn't work out in the end, uh, <laughs> well, there was a change of course, but there was also something uh, very true, although bittersweet about these relationship uh, with Lee uh, and that I thought that was also a really important story. And I love the way that Duella came into her own uh, as a woman and as a leader on that ship. And I suppose, uh, Candice, in terms of your working week now on set, in terms of Battlestar Galactica, from the time you got the original sort of table read for the next sort of episode, uh, in terms of live shooting, maybe script changes, how long was your working day and, and in terms of how long did it take to produce uh, one sort of episode or, or you were sort of a, a character that you probably had uh, recurring parts and different scenes in the, within the whole 45 minutes of the show. So how, how long was a working day for Candace McClure on the set of Battlestar Galactica? <laughs> um, so it, it takes eight, eight days uh, to mm. produce an episode. And so there's a bit of overlap. Uh, I wasn't one of the top fold leads, as you would as you would yeah. call it. I wasn't one of the top seven. Uh, so my work schedule was a little bit more erratic. It was sometimes difficult. I liked being on set and being in the atmosphere. You could kind of keep the energy. It was more difficult when you were away for four days and then you came back for two days and then you were away again. I always sort of felt like I was catching up. Uh, it depended on the day of the week and it depended on the director. Uh, yes. If it was a Friday uh, with a particularly large episode with a particular director, uh, we could be there for 16 or 18 hours. Um, okay. But typically the workday was a minimum of 10. It was usually around 12 or 14. And uh, Candice, in terms of your set, you mentioned the IC sort of set that you're on. Could you actually explain what that sort of looked like uh, in terms of the actual set itself? Uh, the IC sort of headquarters, was it, uh, was it confined to one set outdoor sort of, or were you an indoor sort of set? Or what did that actually look like? How big or how large was that? Oh, my goodness. The CIC was an incredible set. Um it was inside a studio. I'm not really good with measurements of time uh, and measurements of space, but I would say it was, it was sort of the space of like four or five studio apartments. <laughs> it was quite large. Uh, it went up two stories. Mm. So there was another story behind me. Um, it was actually quite 
big. I would say that any given time, there were probably 30 to 50 people in that set. Uh, it was on a sound stage and you entered it as though you were entering the ship. So you actually came through a, from the outside onto the set into a hallway that was the ship's hallway. And those hallways would lead to the CIC. So it really did feel like walking into like going to work, like I was on the ship. It was completely enclosed. So you only saw the CIC uh, and there was the command center the strategy, I could look over and see Gata sit, sitting opposite me. We would often share looks and in real time because we could both see the same screens. Um, the uh, uh, production design department was amazing because all those screens were live. So whenever there were Dreda's contacts or Cylons uh, that were showing up on the radar, you could actually see that and in real time to uh, what was going on in the dialogue okay. and in the script. Um, uh, it was all uh, marine, sort of submarine uh, Navy equipment. Um, so you could pull up the phones, you could ring them, you could hit the buttons, things would make noises. It was actually really fun. <laughs> um, uh, and there were a lot of people milling around. Uh, again, it's, you know, your analog, it's an analog uh, ship. So everybody had to man each station and people did. Um, the detail, all the manuals, the books, they cut all the corners so that they were, you know, uh, Galactica grade. <laughs> every sheet of paper, every printout um, had relevant information on it. So it was, it was such an immersive set that as an actor, you could walk in there and it's like you were there. You may as well have been on a ship. There was a lot of atmospheric smoke though. So it was good to take a break every, every once in a while um, uh, and get some fresh air. But other than that, uh, best place to pr play pretend that you were on a spaceship. I suppose Candice, I, I'm afraid you can't escape this interview without talking about your uh, famous uh, death scene uh, in, in uh, Battlestar Galactica. Um, one thing, I remember watching it back there there today in terms of doing the research, and it almost felt like a little girl at her mirror, sort of looking in all her hopes and sort of a dream, sort of brushing her hair, taking off her keychain, putting on a ring on the thing, and then, lo and behold, bang, wallop, and noise, and sort of a sort of, a sort of bitter, sort of sweet sort of ending. It was just that a person that wanted to go out on their own terms and not let the terms be being decided and almost felt sort of trapped in a sort of that this was her fate and it wasn't going to accept her fate. Um, I think that episode was really beautifully done, even though it's such a challenging subject to talk about, of course. Mm. And you're exactly right. So much, she held so much hope and she was that engine of hope and belief for so many people on the ship. Um, and so many things felt out of her control uh, oh. that it was a way to create a kind of container and have some sort of sense of control. And I think also uh, the finality of it in the research that I did, um, the finality of it often give, gave, gives people in, in notes that were left behind a sense of peace. And perhaps that's um, what she had often longed for and didn't see that happening um, in her lifetime, perhaps. It was, it was challenging for me, certainly, but I do understand that it's a part of the human story and it was necessary to tell in that context. And uh, Candice, was it a case that maybe that your character had inner demons that she probably didn't, she looked like the, the every sort of character, the sort of, you mentioned, I hope, that sort of bright face, that bubble of enthusiasm, but maybe deep inside she had these sort of inner demons that she sort of concealed to herself that nobody was sort of aware of, and maybe that came out with her final sort of ending. I think there was so much hope in Duella and perhaps she had these dreams of her life 
um, of returning to Sagittarium, of, of repairing things with her family, of finding a place that she could just live and be and be in love and, and create. Um, she was kind of lost when she came to, to the Battlestar. So you remember she was an enlisted officer. Mm. She left where she was in order to try and find herself. And she went against all of her family's beliefs in order to be there. So she was a renegade naturally. But I think, I think the, the thing that fueled Duala was hope. And she couldn't see it anymore, anywhere. And that was kind of and, the end of the problem. And I suppose uh, Candice, one thing I, I spoke to Grace Park about, and she mentioned uh, was she did conventions that as soon as uh, Battlestar Galactica was over, she got cast in a good sort of production. So she actually missed out on those type of conventions. What was the story for you in terms of all those sci-fi conventions? Obviously, Battlestar Galactica, a massive sort of sci-fi show. Were you finding yourself, once the franchise was over, getting invites to conventions all over the world? Um, I've done less than some of us and more yeah. than others. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, you know, I'm not sure if we'll ever get to do them again. The conventions are an amazing opportunity to really interact with people who your work has affected. Uh, and the show has affected so many people and continues to do so. People would come to us with such personal and beautiful stories about moments that they shared with uh, loved ones, relationships that were repaired because of the show, ways of processing grief and difficult things that had gone on in their life through the show. Um, plus you get to travel the world and hear yourself uh, in different languages. I got to meet all the amazing uh, actresses who translated my voice in different <laughs> languages who played the uh, the French duella, the Spanish duella, the German duella. <laughs> and I, I suppose, Candice, in terms of Battlestar Galactica, um, in terms of the TV series, you basically covered everything in the four seasons uh, in terms of that 74 episodes. And there was a really uh, conclusion to the story. Is there any sort of room maybe there for in the future for another sort of movie, another sort of TV series? Or is, is uh, because of the finality of Battlestar Galactica, have you every sort of base and stone covered? Is there any sort of opportunities for the franchise going forward? Oh, I don't know if I'm in a position to say. I mean, um, I think what we did, what Ron Moore created, um, was so was so different, was so accomplished, was so thorough and thoughtful and fresh and topical, and so perfect for the time that it came out. But you know, as the world evolves, as uh, politics and humanity and environmentalism and all these things, uh, AI and technology become more complicated. And since Battlestar served as such an incredible platform in order to talk about these really difficult things, maybe there is a way. Um, I feel like our show is so self-contained um, that it it had its own message and it had something that it wanted to accomplish. Ron knew the beginning and he knew the end and everything, the container in between sort of we co-created. Um, and it stands the test of time, it stands alone. And I have no uh, doubt that um, somebody will have a new take on it for, for a new time, you know, in this, meta modern world that we live in maybe the reimagined battle star was the postmodern version and perhaps there's room for the meta battle star galactica <laughs> Uh, Candice uh, McClure, a pleasure talking to you today to relive your memories of playing Officer Duala in the iconic uh, sci-fi series, a cult classic sci-fi series in Battlestar uh, Gal Galactic. And who knows, you mentioned there about uh, alternative takes in the 21st century, and that might, it might reimagine the character uh, Officer Duala again and uh, a re recurring, recurrence of your role, and I'm sure by the sounds of you, that would be two thumbs up to that opportunity if it came about. 
absolutely. Uh, I will always play Duella. Who knows? She can come back as an angel or a hologram or uh, who knows. But in a the silent. absence of that, uh, as a Cylon, <laughs> um, always. Such a pleasure. Uh, Candy, it's an absolute pleasure talking to you uh, this evening in these uh, troublesome times. Uh, to you and your family and your loved ones, uh, stay safe, uh, stay care, stay care, and uh, have uh, prosperous opportunities uh, heading into 2021. Thank you so much, James, and the same to you and all your listeners. Thank you.